joining welcoming the chair of the President's Council of Economic Advisors, Professor Christine Romer, before the committee this afternoon. While I often disagree with her advice to the President, I'm always appreciative of how accessible you are to this committee. On November 2nd, uh, the American people will judge the economic policies of President Obama and congressional Democrats and may well direct a mid-course correction, much as professors do with their students at midterm. President Obama took office under unfavorable economic circumstances, but so did Franklin Roosevelt and Ronald Reagan. The question is, has the White House met its economic promises, and are we positioned for long-term growth? Economists, job creators in the private sector, and families should question. Have President Obama and congressional Democrats spurred private investment and job creation with their stimulus spending, or have their policies added costs and uncertainty that have weakened the recovery? Have President Obama and congressional Democrats met our democratic ch demographic challenges and improved our long-term economic prospects, or have they diminished them through an ideologically driven expansion of the size and scope of the federal government, higher taxes, burdensome new regulations, and a reckless increase in federal debt? To help answer these questions, let us examine the record as measured by the standards that the White House has set for itself and for the country. In January 2009, Madam Chairman, you published an economic analysis of President Obama's stimulus bill plan and forecast that if Congress were to pass this plan, one, the employment, unemployment rate would remain below 8 percent, two, non-farm payroll employment would increase to 137.6 million by the fourth quarter of this year, and finally, 90 percent of the jobs created would be in the private sector. Obviously, Congressional Democrats passed the stimulus bill and the President signed in law. Today, we see the, the fourth quarterly report of the stimulus bill, and I will, in all honesty, nominate it as a Pulitzer in fiction, which would be humorous, but for 15 million American workers who face the harsh reality of no jobs. What's missing from this report are the benchmarks the White House set for itself, which you can argue Democrat and Republican benchmarks, but let's look at what the White House said the stimulus would do. Instead of, uh, of keeping the unemployment rate below 8 percent, it's at 9.5 percent today and going higher. Non-farm payroll employment right now is 130.5 million, 7 million jobs short of the, where the White House predicts it will be at the end of this year. And then since February 2009, 90% of the jobs in the private sector being created, just the opposite. The federal government uh, payroll has increased by over 400,000. Private sector, where the jobs and recovery actually occur, has lost 3.3 million payroll jobs. Clearly, the President's stimulus plan failed to work, as was predicted. Instead, this recovery has been unusually weak for one after a severe recession. Uh, turning to the long-term consequences of the Democrats' economic policy, one sees higher taxes, heavy regulation, gaping federal budget deficits, and soaring federal debt. President Obama and our congressional Democrats are increasing taxes through legislation. Their failure to legislate and bracket creep in the non-index portion of the tax code, including the alternative minimum tax and excise tax on so-called Cadillac health care plans. Individual income tax rates will increase at the end of this year, and without a, a solution, up to 27 million families will become ensnared in the alternative minimum tax for the first time. The top tax rate on capital gains will increase from 15 percent this year to 23.8 percent in 2013, while the top tax rate on dividends will also skyrocket from 15 percent this year to 43.4 percent in 2013. Congress allowed the research and development tax credit to expire. Moreover, Congress levied new excise taxes on private health insurance plans, pharmaceutical and medical device manufacturers, and tanning salons. And if these tax increases aren't enough to choke the private sector, President Obama and the congressional Democrats are still scheming to pass new energy taxes through cap-and-trade legislation and green jobs legislation. According to press reports, two administration panels will recommend levying a value-added tax once the midterm elections are over. However, these massive tax increases are still not enough to fund Obama's extravagant federal spending. The Congressional Budget Office uh, uh, predicts federal outlays over the next decade will be 24.1 percent of our economy, 4.6 percentage points above the post-war average in this country. 
Our long-term fiscal outlook is dire. If current policies remain in place, the Congressional Law Budget Office projects the publicly held federal debt will soar to an incredible 947 percent of our GDP by the end of fiscal year 2084. These are all drags on our economy, and Madam Chairman, look forward to discussing these issues with you. Yield back.